Hey guys, I know it's kind of weird that we are doing chapel this way, but schedules were conflicting and this is the only way we could do it. And we really didn't want to skip chapel. So I hope you guys enjoyed uh, the two worship songs I picked out for you. If you haven't done them yet, there's two uh, that you guys will get to sing at the end of chapel whenever your teacher decides. Um, it's some, uh, those are a few of my favorites. Now, if you guys remember, we've been talking about attributes of God, the characteristics of God that we should try to copy, the moral attributes. We've already talked about good. Now, remember, God is good. And then the one we talked about last week is God. God is just. Remember, God is fair. And because he's fair, all sin has to be punished. So the first thing I thought we should do is define sin. Now, sin is a little bit difficult to define because it's anything that offends God. It's anything that God has told us not to do. When God created people, he had a certain way he wanted us to live. And he made us to live this way, to value certain things, uh, to speak certain ways, to uh, act certain ways. And when we don't do those things, that is sin. So sin could be an action, hitting somebody, stealing, um, saying ugly words. Sin could be an attitude, an attitude of, I just don't care, or um, a bad attitude where you're just mad at everybody and you blame everybody for every wrong thing that's ever happened. Thoughts can even be sin. You may not do something, but you're thinking it in your head. You're thinking ugly things in your head or wasting time. There's so many things that offend God. They're against the way that God has made us to live. And because God, remember, God is just, because God is just, sin has to be punished. Now, if you think back to last week, we talked about Adam and Eve. Now, Adam and Eve, the first two people, we know because of Satan tricking Eve, they chose to go against God. They went against the way God said they needed to live. And there were consequences for that. And they got kicked out of the garden and there's a whole lot of other things that happened too. But life got really tough for them. But guys, the most horrible of the consequences is that God couldn't hang out with them anymore. He had to separate himself from them because sin grosses him out. Now, Isaiah 118 um, actually has an interesting visual for this, all right? Imagine you are a piece of paper. Now, Isaiah 118 says our sin is like scarlet red on our hearts. So here I've got my little scarlet red pen, um, my marker here. So imagine you are going through life, all right? You're trying to do be a good kid, but we know that all of us have done bad things every single one of us. So let's say one day your mom asks you, have you cleaned your room? And you're like, yeah, even though you had not cleaned your room. According to the Bible, that's like a big red dot on our hearts. Well, let's say a few days later, your sister goes into your messy room that you didn't clean and she's messing with your stuff and you get really mad and you yell mean things at her, maybe even say that you hate her. Oh, that is a horrible thing to do. Oh, that's a big one right there. Oh, telling your sister you hate her. Well, let's say at school, you forgot to do homework. And so you get somebody else's homework and you copy the answers. Ooh, that's cheating. Oh, that's a big one. Oh, that's horrible. And so there we go right there. We are no longer clean. We have sin on us. And because God is just, sin has to be punished all over the place. Now, I don't know about you guys, but that's a big problem to me because I want to spend forever with God. But there's good news. He has a plan. Now, we have to remember who God is. God is good. He's the standard of what's good and what's bad. God is just. That means he's fair, but it also means that he has to punish sin. So our attribute for today is God is righteous. 
Now, if you look at the very beginning of that word, it kind of gives you a clue of what it's telling us about God. God is right. Now, when we say God is righteous, let's say this piece of paper is God. Righteous means that God is completely without sin. He has never, ever done anything wrong. And that's why his piece of paper is completely clean. There are no red dots on God because he is completely pure, completely clean. So we're going to take this so we can remember God is righteous. He is completely without sin. He is pure. So we put our God is righteous piece of paper right behind me on the wall. So you will not forget God is completely without sin. He has never, ever sinned. But compare that to us. Sinful, righteous. That's a problem because God cannot allow sin into his presence. Now we compare ourselves to God. We know we're not perfect. And what we may try to do is we may try to do some good things to cover up these sins. Maybe, you know, that big one where we yelled at our sister, oh, we're going to tell her nice things and we are going to let her play with our favorite toy. Oh yeah, we'll try to do some good things to cover those up. And oh, when, when you lied to your dad, maybe, you know, hey, I'm going to take out the trash without being asked. And maybe, you know, to your teacher, okay, you're going to be extra good this week because you know that you cheated and you know that was a bad thing. And, and we try to cover up our sin with good works. Now, the problem is, are we pure? No, all we've done is try to do good works to cover up our bad ones. You know what? To be with God forever we have to have a completely clean slate. Now, God loves us, and this was a big problem. But like I said, he had a plan, and the plan was Jesus. Jesus, who has always existed, who is also righteous, who has never, ever sinned. He left heaven and came to earth. Now, there's th four books of the Bible that tell us the stories of Jesus' life while he was here. We know that he was born, it's what we celebrate at Christmas, in Bethlehem. We know he lived for 30 years, and he started, it wasn't until he was 30, he started telling people who he was, that he was God, he was righteous, and he came to tell everybody that there was a way to get back to God. Now, for three years, he went around and told people who he was. And when he was 33, he was arrested by the Romans, went through three different trials, and they made up crazy stuff because we know that he was righteous. He never, ever sinned. They had to make up things to have him crucified. And we know on a Friday, way back 2,000 years ago, Jesus died a horrible death on the cross for doing nothing because he was completely without sin. But Easter's coming up. And that is the celebration. So for Friday, Saturday, Sunday, he was in the tomb for three days dead. But you guys remember what happened on Sunday. He came back from the dead. And that was a big, huge clue that he really was God and he really was righteous. And when he died on the cross, it wasn't just because a bunch of mean people lied about him. He let them put him on the cross because there was something he had to do. While he was on the cross, he took all of our sins, all of the bad things that we had done, and he took the punishment for those things. Isn't that incredible? As a matter of fact, Romans 5, 8 says, but God demonstrates his own love for us that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Jesus didn't die for you because you're a good kid. He died for you because you are a sinner and somebody had to be punished for these sins. Now, this is the great news. Be, even though God is just, he said, you know what? If you believe in me, if you believe that you are a sinner, 
and you believe what Jesus did, and if you submit, if you give Jesus your life, you know what he's going to do? He's going to take all of those sins and he's going to take them away to be dropped in the deepest, darkest depths of the ocean, to never be seen again, to never be brought up again. And if you believe in Jesus, and if you decide to follow him, you will be looked at as righteous. Now we know as Christians, we still sin. Even those sins are forgiven though. Jesus already took them. Now, when we do sin, it messes up our relationship with God. We we kind of break our relationship with God and we can't really talk to him the same way until we confess those sins. But guys, all of the sins that you've ever committed, the ones that you will commit today and the ones that you will commit in the future, they were all put on Jesus while he was on the cross. So even though it is so sad and may, oh, it hurts our hearts to think of Jesus on the cross. That's why we call it Good Friday because it was the day that Jesus took all of the sins of all of us and put him on himself and God punished him while he was on that cross. And it only takes belief. Think of the verse, John three sixteen: for God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Now I may have told you guys the story before, but years ago I was really into rock climbing and I wasn't very good at it. Um, but you kind of need two people to rock climb. And so when I would go to the rock climbing gym, which was basically they put up all the fake rocks, you know, the entire building was covered with rock walls. Um, you had to find somebody to partner up with. So I went in one night and said, hey, I'm here by myself. And they teamed me up with a woman named Beatrice. Now she was a little bit older than me, um, but she'd been doing this rock climbing thing for a really long time. And so I helped her first, you know, I was down on the ground, I was holding the rope and it's called belaying and making sure that if she slipped, you know, she wouldn't fall all the way down. And she picked a really hard wall. Well, when it was my turn, we went over to, you know, like the kid's wall and I started climbing and it was obvious she knew what she was doing because she was a, like, Hey Dawn, there's a rock over to your left foot. And you know, rock climbing, the most fun thing about rock climbing is getting to the top. All right. Because the shoes aren't attractive. The harness is not attractive and it's really, really hard work. All right. But finally with her help and her holding the rope, making sure I didn't fall, um, I got to the top and I was so excited. And then she goes, all right, great job. It's time to let go. I've got you. And that meant I was going to let go of the wall and she was going to hold me up with that rope. In that moment, I didn't really believe Beatrice was going to keep me from falling. How do I know that? Because of my actions. And guys, when John 3.16 talks about us believing, it's kind of like that. In my head, I knew she wasn't going to let me fall. She knew what she was doing. But, oh, my heart was terrified. I just could not let go of those other rock, those rocks because I was afraid that she was going to let me fall. And so even though I knew the truth in my head, mm, I didn't act on it. And I think that's sometimes the way we are with Jesus. You guys believe in your head. You know the story. You know the story of Easter. You know how Jesus died for your sins. You know that you're a sinner. You know you've done wrong things. But guess what? You haven't done anything about it yet. It's still just in your head. You've got to let go of everything else that you think is going to get you back to God. Guys, trying to be a good person is not going to get you back to God. That's just putting stickers over our sin. Going to church isn't going to get you to God. Memorizing verses, it is faith and trust in Jesus. Now, finally, you know, to go back to my rock climbing story, I kind of ungracefully slid down the rocks until I felt her rope pull and I knew she had me. So then I was able to let go of the rocks. But guys, I had to do something. Belief in Jesus requires an action. That means you actually need to go have a conversation with God. And the conversation can be really easy. You have to do something. You have to go to God and pray. And the prayer can be really easy. 
God, I know I've sinned and I've offended you. And because of that, I'm separated from you. God, I know and believe that Jesus died on the cross and was punished for all of my sin. And then you need to submit to him. God, I give you my life. I'm going to put you in charge so I can get this gift of salvation to be with you forever. And guys, when you really mean it and you do something about it, the Holy Spirit's going to come in and move in. And there is going to be a change in you that change the way you think, the things that you want to do. You're going to hate your sin. You're going to want to get to know God better. The righteous God. And what's really cool is after you decide to follow Jesus and become a Christian, he will work on you and make you righteous. He's going to take out that sin. He wants to get rid of that sin in your life and replace it with the character of Christ. Now, before you guys leave today, if you're not really sure that you have believed in Jesus, I want you to make sure you ask your teacher. Or when you see me, I would love to talk to you about it. But make sure that you have had that belief to be connected with a righteous God. I now realize that in the 80s, we used the word righteous completely wrong. When something was cool and when you liked something, righteous dude. Yeah, we're using that word completely wrong. So when we think about God being righteous, we want to think about and remember what Jesus did for us on the cross. A righteous son of God took the punishment for our sin, even though there was no sin on him. So we're going to say, God is righteous, and we're going to make a cross. So you guys try that with me, all right? God is righteous. Now we're going to review our three, all right? God is good, excellent. And then the one we did last week, God is just, I know you guys got that one right. And then today, God is righteous. Well, thank you so much for listening. I hope you guys have a great afternoon. And I can't wait to see you. Make sure you wave at me in the hallway. And please know that I'm praying for you guys. Love you a bunch. Bye.